get out of here as well. Kind of got sick of making making do with no tools, putting tyres on the redneck way. Did a video on one, where, um, did a tyre change on the ground here, all without the proper um, no, the proper leverage and the proper stuff they use to leave the tyres off like the machines do. So I've tried to make something as close to the machine as we can. Oh, me and the old man made this. So we've done something like this, that's a blade. Similar, similar to what a tyre fitting machine would use. It's just a flat piece of steel plate. We ground it like a knife blade out of it. Then run over it with a linishing sanding disc. Polish it as smooth as we could possibly get it. And this end here, we just break the bead like with a tractor. Put a big weight in the tyre, just because that uses, we haven't got a proper hydraulic setup to, to, to break the bead. Don't have a proper bead breaker, so I'll just make do with a tractor and hydraulics to do that. That this end here, we use a put under the bead, lift it up, and a rim slides over this and bolts on here. Then we just lever it around, work our way around with this lever, and this just prizes the tyre off. Works quite well. Then this end here, we made so we can put the tyres on with. Just yeah, put the tyre, put the tyre on, just chuck the rim in. Get a little mallet, which is over there. Smash the um. You've all seen me how I put a tyre on in the previous video. You smash it on with a mallet till the bead snaps off on the first side. Then when it, once it's somewhere, put it back on here. Get this little lever here, which we've made so this little hook here, you see, hooks under the um, brings the tyre back over the rim. Then locks it down, and we just work our way around. Then once we get halfway, we push the tyre under so it sits in the second, the lowest part of the rim. So it moves more, and the bead just goes all the way around, and this will just help push it on. It works quite well to put the tyres on, so it's just a lot of headache. It makes your job a lot easier. And I use, um, this is what the proper tyre fittings fitting people use. It's just um, irrigation pipe, jointing um, lubricant. There's a rubber flange in here. They're the two main pressure main irrigation pipes. There's a big rubber o-ring in there. Which looks like that. And that seals the two irrigation pipes together. But when you're pushing the um, pipes together, that tends to grab and you can't get it to move. It's such a strong grip. This is a similar stuff they use for that, which is the same stuff for tyre flats use for the, to lubricate their tyre fitting machines with. There's a can here, and they've got another tool at the back. Good stuff, it makes your job a lot easier, and it saves damage to the tyre, so. Quite happy how this has worked out. Didn't do a video on how to actually demonstration of how to I actually use this, but this tool here we made is just both take the tire off and put it on. Two in one. And this is just the thing that holds it so it can leverage as leverage. And that just drags around here against that as leverage. So it makes a job I could probably fit it using this. I was fit it, I was I was able to fit a tire within 15 minutes. So it's pretty damn good for something on the farm, so, yeah. Okay, we always got this bloody capacitor out of this satellite box. Yeah. You can sort of hear a rattle when I tap it. That's the actual paper electrolyte inside has come loose. Because it's so dried out and it's shrunk a bit. Now it's completely dried out from being puffed and vented. So it's, now that it's dried out, I'm going to solder it on the end of this. I'm running off an AC and ballast it because it is shorted. So I'm going to teach that cat on crap capacitor a lesson. It's a 450 volt, but being shorted and running it on 240 should finish it off. Hopefully, use a ballast, plug it in, and just turn the power on and see what happens. I'm going to solder that under the end of this cord. Here's another thing I found out with high current and capacitor foil. It's pretty interesting. It makes a nice light show when you do this. Finally get a good connection. Can't get it to hold though. You gotta get it to hold and it just sparks loudly. No. Get a real bright spark but I can't get it to go. There you go. Okay viewers. I'm gonna switch the earth off just in case this does burn up. And short to this earth. Which is earth to here, much of the earth breaker, so handy to have that switch so I can turn the earth off so that can just do all at once. 
I'm going to set my tripod up and see what this thing can do. Okay, viewers, power on. Nothing. Okay, the ballast didn't even get warm, so I think it may have gone open circuit. That wasn't very interesting, so... Okay, the oars are on. I'm autopsy this. Just to see what the hell is going on inside this damn thing. So for side cutters, I'm going to just get the side cutters and you can just snip it around where it's... Um, where they crimp it together. You could use a flat screwdriver and just pry the bottom off, but I'm going to see what I can do. Some capacitors... This one obviously doesn't, but better brand use a like a printed circuit board substrate that's coated with this rubber and that's pressed in and that's probably a better quality. But this one it looks like it's just a piece of rubber, so I should be able to just prise it out with something sharp and just pluck the rubber out and get it out like that. So, <clears throat> I might try that method. So, okay, if yours all got to part. Just snipped all the um, the crimp off, and you can see the vent and all the guts inside there that have popped out of that vent. You see it's kind of bulged. And here's the actual stuff itself, it's all dried out. Yeah, you can see it's just, it just smells like crap. It doesn't even smell like a proper formula. But there's a bit of tape there. I'm going to cut that tape and just unroll that. See what sort of damage we've done. So you're going to I might set the um, tripod up here. Okay, feel as well when you're working with these, always wash your hands afterwards because um, electrolyte is bad for your skin. I know, damage the foil now. Damn it. Just going to try and leave it intact as I can. So now there you go. There's a the foil, one's positive and one's negative, and these bits of paper they are dielectric. And this is all soaked in the electrolyte. And that's the electrolyte that the Chinese use that is bad. There's one of the leads connects to there. In the middle of it, here, is where the, one of the other ones connect to. That's probably 50 centimetres long there. Alright, let's get this apart. Now, I didn't take note which one of these is positive or negative. The shiny one, I think it might be positive. And this cloudy grey one's negative. We've got some damage there though, so looks like there must be what's must be the source of the problem what goes bad in these. So I must short out somehow. Um the electrolyte must break down and must somehow short out through the paper so yeah, there's where the other lead connects. I might put that across my mop and see how much amps I can get through it before it um, pops. There you go, there's a foil part. And there's where it's... I think I hit that with a slanting knife, so that's not from factory. That's where the positive connects. There you go. Now I'm going to put it across my um, way around mop and watch it all make sparks shower. Let's try the other plate. Let's see how this goes. Yeah, a little bit conductive. Not as much though. Alright. This might help. Don't want to burn myself. No. Bad connection. Don't even get warm. There you go, of yours. One totally destroyed electrolytic capacitor, so. Yeah. Thanks for watching.